Good evening everyone and thank you for joining us this evening for our RMIT Postgraduate Month series. My name is Dr Linda Robinson and I'm a Senior Lecturer in Marketing here at RMIT. I'm also the Program Manager for Postgraduate Marketing. I'm excited to be presenting to you on what's next in marketing. Alongside me tonight, we have Associate Professor Con Stavros, who is the Associate Dean of Marketing and one of our fantastic lecturers in the Master of Marketing program. Hi everyone, it's nice to be with you and I look forward to talking to you uh, throughout the evening as well. We also have Christina Zanar, a current student at RMIT, who is in her final semester of study and is here to share her experiences of the Master of Marketing program. Hi everyone, I'm looking forward to sharing my experiences with you. Thanks, Con and Christina. Before we get started, I would like to say Womanjika, which means welcome to, in the Indigenous language local to our RMIT Melbourne campus. At RMIT, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. We respectfully recognise Elders past, present and emerging. Next slide, please, Rohan. So just a few housekeeping items to keep in mind for tonight. This webinar is being recorded and will be sent via email with the slides within 24 hours. An open question and answer session will be held for the 15 minutes at the end of the webinar. So please answer any questions, uh, sorry, not answer, ask any questions that you would like in the Q&A section um, at any time during the webinar and we'll get to them towards the end. There is a brief survey after the event for you to complete and we'd love to hear your feedback. So now I'm going to pass over to Con, who's going to tell you about why you should study marketing and why study at RMIT. OK, hi again, everyone. It's um, great to have you with us here today. As Linda mentioned, I'm the Associate Dean of Marketing in the School of Economics finance and marketing at RMIT University, but I think probably more importantly, uh, I'm also a lecturer on our postgraduate marketing program uh, and have been through, uh, in that position for uh, pretty much all of my uh, relatively long career in academia. So if you do end up coming to RMIT and studying our graduate certificate or our Master of Marketing, I look forward to being able to, uh, to teach you on the program uh, as well. Now, marketing is really quite a diverse area. I think many people make the mistake and think that it's quite narrow or just focused on sales or, or advertising. But marketing is really a planning function that has quite a lot of um, different aspects to it. It sometimes gets criticised. I think the old joke about marketing is that it's about making you buy things that you don't want with money that you don't have to impress people that you don't know. And um, that uh, certainly uh, is, is humorous about the power or the uh, or, the, or the, uh, the pull that marketing can actually have on consumer behaviour and the purchasing habits um, that we have. I think, obviously think it's a really exciting career. I think it's a career where you can move into a number of different uh, areas. Um, and I think it's a career that has potential in the future. We're very much in difficult and challenging times at the moment. But as you can see with some of the data that's on the screen at the moment, there is an expectation that the demand for marketers will continue to grow in the years ahead. And particularly as businesses start to come back online, we look to try and grow the economy and develop growth, um, marketers will play a really important part of that journey. It's the marketers, of course, that will link the brands to the to the consumers. It's the marketers that will try and excite people about purchases. It's marketers that will try and drive consumers to new forms of technology and, and new levels of engagement. It's really, it's really a very exciting time to be in the marketing um, field. Um, working in marketing, I think, if we can go to the next slide, is very much about uh, a mixture of art and science. And I think that's one of the great uh, elements of this particular profession. There is a science to, to marketing. There's, a, there's things that can be measured very, very precisely. But for those of you that have a, a creative element, and we all do as, as part of our makeup, um, marketing allows you to, to bring that to the forefront as well. And it's one of the few professions, I think, where you can actually um, blend those two areas um, really well. Now, we're very proud of our 
uh, postgraduate uh, marketing program at RMIT University. Linda will tell you a little bit more about it in, in a moment. But as you can see from some of the, the numbers there, we are a highly regarded university um, uh, with global recognition, lots of successful graduates that are doing amazing things in the real world. And what we, we are really well known for is the practical element of our programs. Um, you'll find that the, whilst there's theory in everything that we learn in marketing, we really bring it to life here at RMIT. Uh, there are brands being mentioned all the time and there are brands coming into the classroom, whether that classroom is online or whether it's it's face to face, brands and real activities are being brought into the classroom all the time. So you not only get to, to learn and understand the theory, but you get to put it into practice right away, not just um, yeah, in your career, but also uh, in the classroom where you can um, develop those skills immediately. If we move to the, to the last slide that I'm going to present uh, for you before we get to, to Linda, um, it really just summarizes those key points that I've that I've talked about, that we're a globally recognized university and, and certainly growing in terms of, of that reputation, the strong industry connections that we have, the focus on the future and the willingness to be adaptive and innovative, and of course, the flexible and practical learning that we try and bring to, to all of our students. Um, we have good class sizes, we have collaborative network, and as the Associate Dean, what I'm particularly excited about is just the high quality of staff that we have uh, on the program. Uh, most of the people that I'm fortunate enough to lead are you know, highly recognised teachers in their own right, but also strongly connected to industry as well. And I'm delighted to hand you back to, to Dr. Linda Robinson, who's an exemplar of all those great things I've been talking about, to tell you a little bit more about our program in detail. I'll be here to answer your questions later on as well. Thanks very much, Con. Um, so we have two programs in postgraduate marketing at RMIT, the Graduate Certificate in Marketing and the Master of Marketing. So the Graduate Certificate in Marketing is four courses um, that you would study full time over a period of six months or one semester or part time in one year. So the Graduate Certificate is a great option if you want to upskill quickly or reskill um, in new with a postgraduate qualification, which is especially important in a very competitive um, marketplace that we have at the moment. The Master of Marketing is for students who want to extend that postgraduate education and get a full range of different uh, learning experiences and be able to upskill in a range of different marketing areas. So depending on your entry pathway, um, which is reliant on your previous studies or work experience. You can either enter into the Master of Marketing via a one and a half year full time study or two years full time study. Once we hopefully are able to be back on campus, I'll talk to that um, in a moment. Our, C uh, our campus is located in the heart of Melbourne CBD. Um, it's easily accessible and it's we have some great facilities uh, for students and for, to hold our classes in. We start these programs uh, for semesters one and two each year with our intake starting in February and July. Now, Christina is going to talk a little bit later on about what it's like to study and how much you can expect time you can actually expect to st spend studying full time. Um, but we recommend that you would should be able to commit at least 12 hours for face to face classes um, or online classes, interactive um, sessions each week if you're studying full time and another 24 hours approximately um, of your time to do all your assessments and other readings, preparations and learning activities. So that's for a full time load of four courses each semester. So what will you actually be studying? If we can get the next slide, please, Rohan. This is the program structure for the Master of Marketing. The first four courses that you'll see listed up the top there with the, the light, very light blue background, there are business enabling courses. Those are courses only students who don't have any background in business studies or no prior work experience um, relevant to marketing in business would need to take to really get their grounding and some foundational understanding of business concepts. 
However, the Master of Marketing content really starts um, when we get into stages A, then B and C. So stage A there, the four courses, marketing management, consumer behavior, marketing communication strategy and marketing research are core courses in the Master of Marketing program. And those four courses also constitute our graduate certificate in marketing. So if you choose just to take the six month full time study option and um, to get a postgraduate qualification, that's where you will start off. And these courses really provide you with strong foundations um, across a wide range of marketing skills and to prepare you for work in almost any industry um, in a marketing role. If you would like to then continue on in the full Master of Marketing program, you then take one additional core course at the end stage of your program, strategic marketing, where you bring together all the concepts you've covered in the rest of the program um, in a capstone project where you work with an industry partner to develop a marketing strategy, um, you know, from the beginning right through to the end. Um, alongside our core courses, you take at least five marketing electives and they're listed on the right hand side of the screen right now. So we have marketing electives across a range of different um, key areas in marketing from brand strategy, which is incredibly important and very popular course um, for students right now. Um, services marketing, business and network marketing for anyone who wants to work in the business side um, and understand business relationships that occur um, and product innovation for new product development um, and social marketing for people who really want to understand how we can better contribute to different social marketing programs um, you know, in society. We also have a range of digital courses and analytic courses that are available um, and very traditional things like international marketing. We have some more um, innovative courses like customer experience design, which are very hands on and um, you know, are quite unique to RMIT in what we do. You also have the option of taking up to two postgraduate electives from outside of marketing within your program. Um, and these can be anything from um, an internship for students who want to build a work portfolio while they study, um, international experiences when we're allowed to leave um, uh, you know, Melbourne or Australia in the future um, or something that interests you in another discipline that can really help build you a unique portfolio and position yourself well for your future career. But however, most of our marketing students do choose to take all of their elect elective options within marketing, which speaks to the quality of the experience that they're getting. If we can move to the next slide, please, Rohan. So at RMIT, we don't want our students to miss out on a semester or a year of study if we can help it. So we want our students and our global community to continue their education journey as best they can. So at the moment, due to the travel ban and restrictions on gatherings um, here in Melbourne, um, we're providing distance learning via our online classes. As to whether this type of learning will continue or not um, does depend on the whole how the whole situation unfolds over the next few months and the government regulations. However, I can tell you the marketing staff at RMIT and our you know our current students are very keen to get back on campus and um, have that real in-person learning experience um, that we thrive on. However, We've found that with the pivot to online um, and distance learning during the pandemic, we've had still had really great experiences and it's brought together a real sense of community amongst our classes and distant learning is not better or worse than in person. It's just different and we're doing different really well at the moment. So if we can have the next slide, please, Rohan. So one thing that Con talked about earlier is that we have a lot of industry experiences in our program, and this is just a range of different courses, uh, different companies that we've worked with in our courses across the program over the past few years. So you'll see that there's a range there of big brand names that are uh, nationally and globally recognized, as well as smaller startup companies 
and not-for-profit or social enterprises. And we were really keen to engage as many small enterprises um, and not-for-profits as we can, because not only recognising the different career paths that our students might follow, but the fact that many of you might be considering um, creating your own business, and this can be a great outcome um, from our program as well. So now I'm going to hand over to Christina, who's going to talk to you about um, her experiences as a student at RMIT. If we can just pop up the next slide, please, Rohan. Um, before we start, I just want to congratulate Christina. She was last week announced as the Student Achievement Award winner from the Australian Institute of Marketing. So this is a national award um, that recognises the best student work in marketing programs across Australia in the past year. So we're very proud of her and um, it was based on work that she did in our very first course of marketing management. So quiz, if you'd like to be able to share. Thank you so much, Linda, for the wish as well. That was a massive achievement for me, especially because I don't have any professional experience in marketing. Um, so I'll talk to you about my personal experience of being a postgrad student in the Master of Marketing program. You know, overall, if I had to do it all over again, I would. It was such an exhilarating experience, um, but I have to say, like, you really have to enter it with the right mindset. Um, towards the end of my bachelor's degree, I was really exhausted. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, so I took a break. Um, I worked here and there a little bit here and there and everywhere. And um, then I decided, OK, I was ready to do a Master of Marketing. Um, and so being in that right mindset really helped with pushing through the multiple deadlines, the multiple group work that I had to do. And, you know, it's like getting ready for a marathon. And it does feel like a marathon, even though it's shorter than a bachelor's degree. Um, so definitely having the right mindset is key. Um, and of course, Linda mentioned online learning, which has been a very tricky transition for me personally as well. But um, perk for me is I didn't have to get ready and, you know, get wear my hijab and have to walk to campus. But um, it's one of those things where you get what you put in. So um, there's a sense of collaboration and co-creating the course as we progress throughout the semester when we transitioned online. So the coordinators would constantly check in with us and see how we're doing and make sure that everyone is OK as we, you know, progress with everything that's happening um, with COVID. So, um, you know, navigating online learning was very much supported throughout my experience and my classmates experience as well. Um, another key challenge with online learning is managing group work. So um, there are students who are not in Australia right now, and that also means that there are different time zones that we had to manage. So group meetings and progressing through that group work was really very, very challenging. But again, that goes back to what you put in and having the right mindset. So you really can't change how other people behave. So I thought that, you know, after every single group project, I thought I had a handle on it. But after every group project, after every semester, every subject, I keep learning new things about working in a group as well. And your lecturers and your tutors are going to say the same thing. You're going to have to learn how to work in a group because that's how real life works. <laughs> Um, but on the plus side, one of the biggest highlights is having access to some incredible educators. Um, personally, Linda and Khan didn't teach me, but I heard fantastic things from my other classmates and my other course mates um, of their caliber in teaching. So um, at a master's level, it really became my own prerogative to get more feedback and get more help from teachers. It's not handed to you very freely. So um, they have been there for me every step of the way. And that was evident from me getting an award because those coordinators have helped me through it. Um, and the second highlight that I have to say is having that industry experience, just echoing on Khan's points about putting theory into practice. It is very hands on. And especially for myself, who, you know, I've never had experience in marketing professionally, having industry partners to work with in that group project was really valuable. So, you know, they join us in class and they give Q&As and they, they give us feedback with our progress in developing solutions for them. So that gave me a taste of what it was re really like, you know, working in marketing. And I have to say, I think I caught the bug. <laughs> so to wrap things up, you know, if, if I had to do it all over again, I definitely would. 
after recuperating some of my finances. Um, but ultimately, you get what you put in. So that's the last thing I'll say about it. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. So we've got a slide on the moment um, about some of the different career options that you can get um, from completing a Master of Marketing, but we've got a lot of great questions coming in and I'm very conscious of time. So we might move to the Q&A portion of the moment uh, of the night. So our first question that we've got up um, is, would this course be more suitable for someone already working in marketing or someone looking to move into marketing? So I'm gonna throw to Con to provide us with that insight. Thanks, Linda. Um, this is a really common question and I teach marketing communication strategy, which is one of the, the first four courses, as you saw in the guideline there. And I can tell you every semester I will have someone uh, uh, sitting at a desk that has five, ten, sometimes more uh, than that experience as a brand manager working in marketing. And the person sitting next to them will be a, an engineer or a, or a nurse or a police officer looking for a career change or someone just coming out of, of other studies looking to develop into marketing. So it is both. Um, we certainly take that into consideration. If you're working in marketing, it, it's great because you can actually take the knowledge and apply it straight away in your work workplace or at least compare and contrast it to what you're doing but there's no requirement that you're actually already um, into marketing. Um, we will obviously uh, hope that you'll get into marketing uh, relatively soon and we'll give you those hands-on projects that will help but it really is suitable for both and all of our teaching staff are very conscious that we've got people at different points of their career and different abilities in the room and we have ways of making sure that we bring everyone together to create a really positive learning environment. Excellent. Thank you very much, Con. So our next question that we've got here is that social marketing is really interesting to me. What can I expect from RMIT in teaching this course? I think that's a great question because social marketing is both interesting and really important. So uh, just to make sure that we're all on the same page here, social marketing is referring to the types of activities, activities where we're aiming to influence behaviors that benefit individuals and communities for social, for the greater social good. So things to do around health, well-being, um, sustainability and environmental marketing are some of the different areas that fit within social marketing. So it's not social media marketing, that belongs in our interactive marketing and our digital marketing courses. Um, but in terms of what you can expect from teaching in the social marketing course at RMIT, um, we are very privileged to have Professor Diane Martin as the coordinator and lecturer for that course on campus. And Diane literally wrote one of the key textbooks on sustainability marketing. So that is one of her core focuses when it comes to social marketing. Um, and she applies the concepts, the theories and the frameworks of social marketing primarily to sustainability causes, which you can then obviously translate into different areas such as health promotions and health marketing, um, into smoking, drinking campaigns, other environmental um, and you know well-being different causes. So hopefully um, you're interested in that and you choose that as one of the electives when you come to RMIT. We've got another question here about do we work with real companies as part of our assignments and the answer is yes, not in every single course, but most of our courses and particularly our later electives and our um, final core courses. Uh, so what happens is an industry partner um, is given to each course that involves this work integrated learning component where they will brief you about a problem that they have um, within their organization and using the theories, the frameworks of the course that you're studying, whether it's product innovation or customer experience design or strategic marketing, you apply those concepts um, and do a project that applies that in real life. So for example, in our marketing analytics course, which is running right now, we have a number of small businesses who've provided us with data sets from their social marketing um, sites and, and um, accounts and have 
provided that to our students to apply marketing analytics concepts to understand and interpret that data and help develop um, strategies for those firms. So um, we've got another question here. What is the advantage of completing a master's versus a graduate certificate or diploma? So I might also ask Con to speak to this as to why you think we should go beyond our wonderful first uh, four courses in the graduate certificate and complete a full master's degree. Yeah, this is this is a really important question. So uh, a graduate certificate is the first four courses um, and uh, that's uh, the, the base uh, level. And then if you go on to do the masters, you're essentially doing uh, 12 or 16, depending on uh, as Linda was talking earlier about uh, what entry point you actually come into it. Um, it really just is a different level of, of qualification. Um, you can start with a graduate certificate and then see how you feel um, and uh, whether you think that's enough for you. Um, to go back to one of my early questions, I, I have had you know senior people in marketing that have said, look, I just need the graduate certificate. That's just sort of to hone some of my skills. Or I've had people working in, say, in the psychology area that said, I'd like to get a little bit of understanding of, of, of how marketing works. So the graduate certificate is suitable for those. The majority of our students, though, do go on and do the entire master's. I'd like to think that's because they're having uh, such a positive learning experience that they would like to develop it and, and focus their skills on the elective on the elective courses, but rest assured, no, nobody will be pressuring you to make a decision um, early on. It really is something that you can that you can choose once you've had a chance to go through um, the graduate certificate and decide whether it's worth um, continuing continuing for you. Obviously, masters is recognised as a higher level um, of degree, so uh, but it takes more time, obviously, to to get to that particular point. Excellent, thanks Con. Um, we have another question now around, can we take electives in other areas? And the answer is yes, you can take up to two courses from outside of marketing in the postgraduate uh, marketing elective um, options. And I'm actually going to ask Christina to tell us a little bit about why she chose to take one of her electives outside of marketing and, and what that was as an example. Sure. Um, thank you, Linda. So I took two electives outside of marketing, actually. So I took them in the communications field because you know I, I've always felt like I had a gift in writing, if I may say so myself. And so I just figured, why not try? And I really did enjoy it. Um, I took two courses. So one was last semester and one was this semester. And it really tied in quite well with um, the courses that I was taking in marketing as well. So they are they, there is there are some overlaps, um, but ultimately you get to meet other people as well, and then they get to learn about the marketing stuff that you're going through. So um, yeah, that was that was very beneficial for me to be able to go outside outside marketing. Excellent, thanks very much, Christina. So we've got time for one last question here, and I've got a couple of questions that are all on the same area. So I'm going to go with that, and they're around um, whether there are any work placement opportunities as part of the program um, or any um, internship opportunities available. And again, the answer is yes. So there are ones that you can do as part of your formal learning and get credit for those as electives. And that's our business internship program, um, where depending on how many hours you do with the, the firm, um, you will get credit for that. And you'll do an assessment around sort of what you learnt and how you applied your previous studies in the program um, to your work experience as part of that internship. Um, you also have the opportunity to do internships, obviously outside of your formal learning that you don't get credit with. And these are often advertised um, by um, you know, our courses directly where we, the lecturers, we have contacts with industry who want to share those opportunities and via RMIT's um, very different, you know, um, job boards and, and opportunities there as well. We also have RMIT on demand where you can gain work experience and new skills that you already have um, to complete work, build your portfolio, as well as you know, get some additional work experiences and, and income along the way when you're studying. So that RMIT on demand works like Sidekicker, um, if you're familiar with that. Um, the 
I'm sorry, I'm just getting another question come here through here. Um, yes, intern uh, inter internships and work placements are available for international students. Obviously, you do have to meet any visa requirements, but they can be part of your program and they're a great opportunity for international students um, to become familiar with working in Australia and to build a work portfolio um, here in Australia as well. Uh, we did have some final questions around um, can you get exemptions if you have a few years of industry experience and whether there's scholarships available? Um, the answer is yes to both of those and there's further information about that on the RMIT website. So unfortunately we are going to have to close the session tonight. Um, we got through that rather quickly. Um, so if you have any other questions at all, please feel free to contact our team here at RMIT and they'll be more than happy to support you. We are also going to post a link to our feedback survey and if you can please take three minutes to complete this, um, it will you know, help us to continue to ensure you get the best out of our virtual information sessions. I hope you found this night insightful and are looking forward to shaping what's next in your career, um, hopefully with us here at RMIT. Take care everyone and enjoy your evening. <laughs>